give me a happy marriage. That prayer cannot be answered. I'm not cursing anybody. The prayer can only be answered when you have done what you should do. God will not do. You can't ask God in prayer to do what he has already commanded you to do. I've told somebody who came to my office and said, I've been, a, I've been a graduate for five or four years, no job, I've never made one naira. I'm sitting at home with, uh, with, with people, they, I'm losing my respect and dignity. Pastor, pray for me that I should just get something. I don't even mind anything at this point. He said, even if it is just be leaving the house, something that will be taking me out of the house because this disrespect is too much. So we prayed that day, then he got, after he, he got a, a job, a teaching job, and they were paying maybe 40 or 30,000. And I didn't see him for a very long time. I saw him later. He now said, I said, ah, ah, congratulations about that, your job. He said, that's not the type of job he wants. I said, eh. He said, they are just paying him ordinary 30,000. He said, after transport, small changes left. He said, Pastor, I see. He, he looks so sad and depressed. Then I told him, did you forget that you told me that even if it is to be leaving your house and they are not even paying you, just, just transport fare, that you are fine. Now, this is more than transport fare. You said you have small change on top of it. He has forgotten. He has forgotten. How many times have we forgotten the giver? Because we are excited about the gift. May the enemy not plague you with the spirit of forgetfulness. Yeah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not, not some, all his benefit. He now began to list them. I thought that he would be listing who gave me a one million dollar. No. He said, who forgive all my sins. As small as that, don't forget that somebody died so that you can be forgiven. As tiny as that may look out to you. The Bible says, we that were no people before. He has made a people. He has made somebody. Now we can come boldly to the, to the throne of grace and obtain mercy. Who are we? Now we are called the children of God. We, who are, we don't even deserve it. I am happy the Bible did not say start with who gave me a million dollars. Because sometimes many people believe that that is the only testimony. He said, who forgives all your sins? Who delivers us from destructions? Do you know how many destructions God is delivering you and I from? Who delivered us from what? From destructions. The rate, look, COVID-19 is real low. Huh? <laughs> because if, if it's not real, how come people are dying like this? Have you, has, have you ever witnessed the rate of death before? Okay, if it's not real, how come almost the deaths are almost the same? How come almost all the deaths are what? Are the same? People slum. Everybody. Nine out of ten. I look on slum, me. Look on slum. Look on. He just, or he slept, he didn't wake up. Now, we know sleeping, not waking up has always been people slumping. Out. I mean, we know that these things are, but the rate is much. And that's why, please, when you are coming to church, let's cover our, let's be covered. Let's not be in a hurry to rush without sanitizing our hands. Praise God. Someone said, but Pastor, God is our protector. And God is our protector when we, when we do the needful. When we do what? See, I don't want you to be those kind of Christians that sees God like a robot. That you can just be remoting. God is not that kind of God. If you don't do the needful, God is not going to protect. Hello? If you don't do the needful, don't expect God to protect you. You have to do the needful. You know, somebody said, you know, people, Christians are funny. Saying, we, 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 don't want, we don't want many children. We just want two. Then you have to be planned. It's not God that will plan how you sleep with your wife. You have to plan it. <laughs> you laugh. It's, it's very funny. Say, I tell, we don't know how it happened. We don't see them. You, you know how it happened. You are, the, you, are the, you are the number one suspect. Don't tie it to God. What did you do to put the thing in the right place? What did you do? You did nothing. Believers are used to doing nothing and expecting God to do something. 
You did nothing. You are playing with her every time. You are no, no regulation, nothing. You didn't go to a hospital and do anything. You know, say, I'm about to him. My wife was telling me about one year. She said, that person needs counseling. I said, that person needs flogging. Flogging. One, not at that way. There's no counseling. Are you following me? The needful. We need to do the needful first. One of the needful is, don't forget. Do you want to enter into greatness in 2021? Eh? Begin to prepare for it. How? Begin to tell yourself, I am going to be thankful. I am from where you are, be thankful. Stop postponing thanksgiving till when you get to the land. No, be thankful that you have been delivered from captivity already. Be thankful that you're already on your way to that place. It is your thanksgiving, your thankfulness where you are that will show that you'll be thankful when you get there. Success multiplies whatever it meets in our hands. That's what success does. If you're ungrateful as a poor person, when you get rich, you'll be more ungrateful. If you used to lie when you were poor, you used to lie, and families will start fighting against themselves because of your lie. When you become rich, you lie. Nations will fight. It will become a global lie. So what success does is that whatever he sees inside you, it will multiply it. So don't say, ah, I'll be grateful when I'm there. If you're not grateful now, you cannot be grateful. Hello? I'll be grateful when he gives me the husband. If you're not grateful as single, you can't be grateful as married. I'll be grateful when he gives me the child. If you're not grateful now, you can't be grateful when he gives you the child. I'll be grateful when I get the job. If you're not grateful as jobless, you can't be grateful when you have the job. That's why God was warning them that you need to change your attitude because the moment you are full, he said, your heart will be lifted up and you'll be ungrateful. Everybody said, I refuse to be ungrateful. Say, Lord, help me to be grateful. Let me show you a place in Romans 1 21. Quickly, Romans chapter 1 verse 21. Romans chapter 1 verse 21. Romans chapter 1. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as what? Why? Because they what? They knew God. They did not glorify him as God. Nor were thankful. But became futile in their thoughts and their foolish heart were darkened. Can I tell you, the, the people that take God for granted most are those who know God. Because they knew God. They what? They did not glorify him as God. Nor were thankful. The reason is because they know him. Familiarity. They are familiar with God. The word there is because they were familiar with God. They did not glorify him as God. And they were ungrateful. You won't be too familiar with God. Amen. I said to you in uh, the story of the ten leper. You know when the one that returned came back. Jesus said, is it not ten people that we heal? Except this stranger. That one doesn't know him. He's not familiar with him. The other nine, they were not strangers. They were church people. They go to God. They go to church every day. They know God. When God starts preaching, they know where he's going. At the middle of the scripture, they know where he's going. No, they know what he was saying. Next. The Bible says because they know God, they did not glorify God as God. And they were not thankful. Those who take God for granted are mostly believers. God is the most Personality, God is the most taken for granted personality in the whole world. That is, if they start evaluating the person that has been most taken advantage of, most taken for granted, it is God. I'm serious. Our employers have not been as taken for granted like God. Our government has not been as taken for granted as God. Because government, we fear them. 
Some of us fear police more than God. Is that because they knew God? They did not glorify him as God. You know, we, we take God for granted a lot. You pray, you say, God, do this for me. If you can do it, I will just bless you. I will do this, I will do this, I will do this. When we're in trouble, our mouth will be rolling like a roller coaster. I'll do this, I'll do this. I'll never forget a young lady I went to preach for. She was dying at the emergency. At the time I went to pray for her, she had taken 16 pints of blood. And she said, if I can get out of this place, ah, I will serve God. I said, God will help you. I won't tell you how the story ends. When we're in trouble, we say, if you can just save me from this last one. Forget about all the ones I've done in the past. This one. My head is correct now. This time I'm telling you the truth. If you can just save me from this one, you you will know. God is a most taking for granted. You know why? God is a spirit. John chapter 4 verse 24. God is what? He's a spirit. So we, and because God is a spirit that we can't see, we take him for granted all the time. We think, if I, I'll just tell him to forgive me. He's my father. He loves me. He will forgive me. He's a merciful God. And I have come to realize in my work with God, the last 30 years that I've worked with God, over 30 years, that when you are taking God for granted, he's also counting. It's also what? It's also counting. Oh, mercy, mercy, grace, they are all available for us. But I've read in the Bible that mercy and grace can be frustrated. You won't frustrate grace over your life. You won't frustrate the mercy of God in your life. Mercy and grace can be frustrated. You can frustrate it. It's in the Bible. The Bible says after you have eaten and you are full. Don't take him for granted. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing we have received that is not from God, including the breath that we have. There is nothing that we we can sit down. We got it from God. That our blood is flowing through our vein, it it is God. That our heart is still pumping, pumping, it is God. There is nothing we have received that is not of God. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5, he said, uh, uh, in the beginning was the word, the word was, he said, he said in, in, in him was life, I'm sorry, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning, and all things were made by him, and nothing was made that was made without him. That is, everything is made by him. Your sitting is made by him. You can carry your head, it's made by him. The Bible says he held all things together by the word of his power. You sit down. It's not the chair holding you. It's the one holding you. Oh, you think it's the chair holding you? It's not the chair. He is the one. The Bible says he's the one holding all things together by the word of his power. That was a mistake Mary made when Mary carried baby Jesus for the first time. He thought he was carrying Jesus. It was Jesus that carried him that day. You can't carry Jesus. Eh? How can you carry somebody who holds everything together by the word of his power? How can you carry someone who holds the heart in space? And all the planets in space. And the sun and the moon in space. How can you carry that person? <laughs> it's not Mary who carried him that day. He was the one carrying David. Because if he should stop carrying Mary, Mary cannot carry him. Everything working in your life is the one making it working. Including the flow of your blood through your vein. Including your heart that is still beating. Including your eyes that is still functioning. Including the leg you are carrying and is still functioning. Everything is his work. The, all the nerves and veins in your body at work is the one. Everything is working by God. 